In this video we are going to talk about rows, nodes and topics. As we know from the previous video, robots contain sensor to perceive the environment, software to make decision based on its goal, and mechanical parts and actuators like motors make action based on what the brain tells it to do. ROSE provides a great and scalable communication system, allowing these different components to communicate with one another. Whether you're programming a drone, a rover to discover a new planet, or an industrial robotic arm, all are built to perform the same three high-level steps. ROSE breaks down these complex process steps in small unit processes called nodes. Typically, each node on a system is responsible for a specific robot's overall functionality. For example, a robotic arm can have a camera to sense where the object to take. So we have a camera node that is responsible for getting an image and translating it into a digital frame. The robot movement is performed thanks to revolution motors mounted on the joints. So there will be a node that is responsible for reading the encoder's value to track the position of the robot. The camera node and the motor joint encoder node send their data as if they were messages to the behavior execution node. This node is responsible for gets those messages and decide what will be the next movement that the robot should do in order to get closer to the object to take and finally grasp it. At the center of this collection of nodes is the Rose Master. The Rose Master works as an intermediate node that aids connections between the nodes. It acts like a manager. The ROS master has all the details about all the nodes running in the ROS environment. It will exchange details of one node with another to establish a connection between them. After exchanging this information, communication will start between the two ROS nodes. This is possible because the ROS master maintains the registry of all active nodes on a system. Each node can use this registry to discover another node and establish a line of communication. Furthermore, the ROSE master also holds the parameter server, a very useful thing in ROSE. This is used to store parameters and configuration values that are shared among the running nodes. If you are already familiar with programming terminology, the parameter server allows you to make global variables in such a way that every node can access that value or parameter, rather than storing the same information in multiple places in different nodes. As we already said, nodes can communicate with one another by passing messages over what are called topics. Let's see more in detail how this process of communication works with a generic example. There are two nodes named Talker and Listener. Before running any nodes in rows, we should start the rows master. If you remember the last video, you should know that you just need to type on a terminal raw score. After that the ROSE master has been started, it will wait for nodes. When the talker node, the publisher, starts running, it will connect to the ROSE master and exchange the publishing topic details with the master. These details include topic name, message type and publishing node URI. URI stands for Uniform Resource Identifier, which can be associated with the identification document of the node. Then we launch the listener node, the subscriber. This node will connect to the master and exchange the details of the node, such as the topic name going to be subscribed to, and its message type. Whenever there is a subscriber and publisher for the same topic, the master node will exchange the publisher URI with the subscriber. This will help both nodes to connect and exchange data. After they've connected, there is no role for the master. The data is not flowing through the master, instead the nodes are interconnected and exchange messages. In this general example, the talker node publishes a string message called hello world into a topic called talker, while the listener node is subscribed to this topic. Now we have the basis to understand our example better and build our publisher subscribers architecture. The node camera publishes on behavior execution node a topic named camera images. This topic is of type image. Likewise, the motor joint encoder node publishes on behavior execution node the topic named joint position. This topic is of type pose. These two topics, camera images and joint position, are subscribed to the node behavior execution. 
This node contains two subscribers and one publisher. In fact, the behavior execution publishes on the motor control node a topic named motor controller. This topic is of type velocity command. Finally, we can also say that the motor control node subscribes to the topic motor controller. We said that a node is a small unique process that performs a certain task. But what is a node in practice? From a computational perspective, a node is nothing else than a script. This script is composed of main parts, functions, if statement, cycle for, cycle while, objects and so on and so forth. For example, you can create subscribers and publishers in each node script by initializing objects. You are going to see how to initialize these objects in the upcoming video. Since a node is a script, you might be asking with which programming language should I code? Well, likely Rose provides libraries, so-called client libraries that allow you to code in Python and C++. You can program node in Python and in C++ depending on your needs and also depending on the package available. ROSCPP is the most recommended and widely used ROSE client libraries for building ROSE nodes. This client library has most of the ROSE concepts implemented and can be used in high-performance applications. ROSPY is used in prototyping and the development time isn't as long. This library is not recommended for high-performance applications, but it is perfect for non-critical tasks. The key takeaway here is that a robot application can be composed by packages coded in C++ and other in Python. And I recommend you to program a node in C++ if you have to deploy a low-level application at high performance, like inverse kinematics calculations for examples, and program in Python for high-level decision making. We will see some examples in the upcoming video where we will explain why for that application is better to code in C++ rather than Python. After this explanation of what is a node and one mode of communication between them like topics, let's make some practice with some node already installed in the ROS environment. Let's get into it, we are going to establish very easy communication between two nodes. In this example, we have a publisher node called Talker that publishes string data on a topic called Chatter. This topic is subscribed to another node called Listener. To do this application, we can use a package already installed in Rose tutorial. You have to bear in mind that for each node that you start, you need to run it in a terminal. So in our example, we are gonna have the Rose master, the publisher node, the talker and the subscriber node, the listener, so we have to open three terminal, two nodes and the Rose master. First of all, open a new terminal. Initialize the Rose master by typing Roscore. Now the Rose master is initialization and as you have understood, this is necessary for establishing the communication between the nodes. Open another terminal and let's run the talker node via command line. Generally speaking, to run a node you have to type on the terminal, Vicerun, the name of the package where our application is built. and the name of the executable file, which is the node. In our case, the node talker executable is a Python file and is contained in a package provided by Rose tutorial named Rospy underscore tutorials. So to run the talker node by typing ROS run Rospy tutorials talker.py. Here you go, the talker node is publishing a string message hello world.
Woz provides a very powerful tool that allows you to visualize the publisher subscriber's architecture. This tool is called RQT Graph. To see how it works, let's open another terminal. Type rows run, the name of the package, RQT Graph and the name of the executable, that in this case is called RQT Graph as well. Here you go. In this window you see the node that are active and we have the talker node that is publishing a string message on the topic chatter. Now let's initialize the node that is subscribing to the topic chatter which is named talker. So let's open a new terminal. Type ROS run the name of the package ROSB tutorials and the name of the executable listener.py. Here you go. The listener node is subscribing to the topic chatter which is published by the talker node. In fact the listener node says on the terminal that it has heard hello world. Let's visualize the publisher subscribe or pub sub architecture on RQT Graph simply by updating the interface. Thanks to RQT Graph you should have a better idea of what are all the node actives on your system and it tells you who is publishing and who is subscribing to a certain topic. Another very useful tool provided by Rose is Rose Topic. If you type Rose Topic list on another terminal it shows you the topic that are active on your system. You see here that the topic active are chatter, the one published by talker node. And rows out, which is provided by the rows master. These are the most important to understand what is going on. If you kill the node talker and listener by typing control V and type rows topic list. You see that the chatter topic is not there anymore. Indeed it was what we expected. Finally, if you open the terminal where the rose master is running and kill the node, if you type rose topic list again, you will fall in error. We are going to discover more tools like that in the upcoming video. For now, it is important to understand how nodes work and how they communicate through topics. Which is only one way and the simplest way of communication. In the next video we are going to create this simple system of talker and listener from scratch. So you can better understand how a node is made and the best way to do it is by coding. If you think you got value from this video, subscribe to the channel to not miss the next topic. If you need clarification, don't hesitate to write in the comment down below and you will reach you out. See you in the next video.